Hey guys, Matt from Eastwood. We're back on the Rusty Cushman project. So the last time for you guys that may not have caught the episode, we did a custom 39 Ford taillight that we Frenched into the back. Basically I did that just to switch it up because the rust repair is uh, kind of tedious on this project. And that's where I feel a lot of people will get caught up and kind of stalled on a project. So we did something custom, that was fun and very rewarding. Now we're on to doing this front corner here and the rest of the little areas that are rusty. We need to get them cut out and replaced. And we showed you that on the other side, the actual process of making this piece. What we're gonna focus on this time is some of my favorite tools that I use for doing this type of job. And we're also gonna give you guys a couple tips along the way that may help you if you're doing a patch panel similar to this. So let's get started. All right, so we got the cuts made around the perimeter of where we're patching. And one thing you need to do when you're doing this type of work is think of future you. So you need to, when you're extracting the panel, you don't want to wreck things that you need to keep. So you need to think of yourself when you're welding this back in, you don't want to mangle all the braces and everything that are behind that we're retaining. So behind this panel here, there is some braces that run across right about here and right down here. And then of course there's a brace around the perimeter of the seat here. Those are all like spot welded to this, and some of them are hard to get into with a cutoff grinder or even see with how rusty this is. So what I like to use is one of these seam splitters. Uh, there's a full set of them you can use that are different angles. This is just probably my favorite that has a slight curve to it. And what I can do is get down in there with a hammer, hammer on it, and I've put little notches in the, in the welds in the edges where I can get to them. So when we hammer on this, it'll just pop everything apart. We can take it off and we're not bending and breaking the braces that are behind here. So we can just clean it up, put it back on and spot it like factory. So I'm gonna start hammering on these, get this all split apart and then we can start making our patch. So for pretty much any project that you work on where you're doing restoration or metal fab, you're going to have to clean the metal, get any surface rust, oil, or old coatings off of the metal before you start working on it. Now this project that we're doing with the Cushman is really, really rough. So I've been using the Contour SCT with the wire, the metal wire drum to get into the pits and clean the metal and kind of get all that major rust knocked off of it. But what we'll do later on in the project, once we get all of our fresh metal in, is we'll switch this out to one of the other drums that's a little less aggressive. We'll go over it and just give it all nice, a nice smooth finish before we start doing our body work. So definitely, if you don't have a Contour SCT, something that you need, and it's so diverse with all the different drums that you have that you can go from really aggressive all the way up to really fine polishing. So you definitely need to get one of these in your toolbox. All right, so we're getting ready to cut out our patch panel here for the outer skin. I got my pattern that's uh, just a little larger than what we need. And I drew that out on this 20 gauge steel here to match what the uh, body already has. The tools that I use for cutting out patch panels most commonly 
uh, especially when it's on the fly like this, is these throatless electric metal shears. These are really nice because you can use them one-handed. Uh, you can cut curves with them, you can cut straight. And I do a lot, most of the cutting with this. Then when we get down to our real uh, tight final cut, I'll just go back to the most simple method, which is just a set of aviation snips, left and right cut. And I will cut that out, especially when you're doing a cut where you need to actually butt weld together. You want your cut to be as uh, perfect as it can be. So by using these for the final cut, just cutting the sliver off, that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, by hand. So I'll start getting this cut out and then we can start bending our patch to fit the body. All right, so we're gonna put a simple radius in this panel like we showed in the last episode where we uh, repaired this, and this is a uh, number three radius. So what I'm using here, we had a couple questions in, in the last video where we used this, was what is this tool? This is just a simple pipe anvil. Basically, I just took three different diameter pieces of tubing, welded them together with about a 1 16th gap between them, and that allows you to slip the metal in and just form it around. This works well for larger pieces or something where you need to do an awkward shape uh, that may not work with another tool. And it gives you a nice smooth radius um, that you can just quickly make. Set. Just pull on it around the pipe. So, got us really close there. Just by quickly getting that set in. So I like to just put, uh, put marks with my orientation when the panel's still kind of in a square shape that I might flip it around. This will help me so I know it's towards the back because this is the edge we cut nicely that'll line up with our, our butt weld. So we want to try and keep that edge so it doesn't get flipped. I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times, you can never have enough of these locking panel clamps. All right, so I drew my line across the bottom here where we need to actually turn this edge over and we're going to be wire edging it. So we're gonna be putting some uh, wire in the bottom there. What I have is just a really simple piece of like, uh, I think it's quarter inch steel here that I cut slots in predetermined lengths The common sizes I use, eighth inch, quarter inch, half inch, and then I have a real long like two inch one here. And basically all this does, it gives you an easy way to, to follow a line to start a bend on it. So once you get that line set, from there it's pretty easy to hammer it around and get everything set. But setting the line is hard to do with a hammer swing and you can end up hitting it and your line will kind of go crazy. So by using this, we can go along the edge, go right up to my, my Sharpie line that I have here, put a little tweak in the panel and that will start your bend and just try and focus on bending it the same every time as you go around. And then we'll slowly work that edge over till we're ready to actually trap the wire in it. Uh, but this is kind of the first round is just going around and bending right on your line using this piece.
All right, so one of the tricky things when you're working with something that's this rough and is banged up and out of shape is that we need to make sure that everything actually will bolt back onto the, uh, to the, the project that you're working on, so in this case the scooter. Uh, one of the fixed things that we can't change is, is the shape of the frame in this, this foot pan area. Uh, we need to slide the body over top of that. So the, the other side, we basically replicated what was there originally. Now this side, I'm trying to pull the, the tweaked side back into shape and then get everything to sit right. So what we did is just took a, a spot check here where we put it back onto the, to the frame and I kind of made notes here checking to see what needs to be cut out. This panel I made is like extra large because I knew I was gonna have to do this. So we were looking at it on the bench, it looked like, whoa, this looks totally wrong. And then we put it on the actual scooter, we could see that it actually does look good and where we are actually cutting into it is kind of into the curve of the panel. So it's a little deceiving when you're looking at it on the bench, but it actually is right. So I'm gonna mimic the angle that this, uh, that the open edge here, or the rolled edge that's on the open part is, I'm gonna mimic that. And then we're also gonna do our cutout here so that it fits down over top of everything, nice and snug, and it looks uh, pretty symmetrical. So that's why we're kinda of just doing this quick fact check before we do any type of cutting of the panel. We wanna make sure that all that's right. So. Uh, that's a good thing to do if you guys are working on something like this that's just totally banged up and, and out of shape. Whether you're doing rust repair or metal fabrication, there is one set of tools that you definitely need, whether you're an expert or a beginner. That's a good set of hammers and dollies. Now I have drawers full of different hammers and dollies that come in all different shapes and sizes to help me get in different areas when working on a project. Just remember that no two projects are the same and whether you have one hammer or 20 hammers, you're never gonna have enough hammers. So always stock up on a good set of hammers and dollies and that's one of my biggest tips. All right, so I got the inner panel for this side all bent up. This is basically the 16 gauge brace that goes on the inside here and just helps keep the form of the front corner of the scooter body. Now you may notice that we're doing the process of building this corner a little differently than the other side. And that just goes to show when you do stuff every time you do a project, you may find a better way from doing the first side to the second side that may make your life easier, may make the job turn out better, or just may make it more time efficient. So this time around, it's both time efficient and also a little bit easier for me to do it the way I'm doing it here. And uh, it's working out pretty nicely now that we have everything tacked in. I can just put this piece in and uh, get it all spot welded in place. But first I need to spray everything down with some self etching weld through primer. that's gonna seal up all these hidden areas before we put it together. And uh, then once we get this in, we're just about ready to wrap it all up. All right, so I got this left front corner all tacked in place like we did the other side. Now, we didn't go quite as in depth this episode on how we formed uh, this front left corner. If you wanna see the exact total process from start to finish, 
uh, with all the steps in between. You can check out episode number two. Uh, but we wanted to show you today mainly the main important tools that I use on any type of patch panel project like that. And the products that we showed you are basically the staple in my Metal Fab uh, toolbox kit uh, that I pretty much pull out on every single job. And I think it's something that you definitely should have if you don't already, because it'll make your life a lot easier. Now that I have this piece tacked in, all the like really scary rust is actually kind of under control now. And I could kind of breathe a little easier because now it's just doing small little areas like at the bottom lip area here. It's a little crunchy. We got to patch that, do some spots around the bracing, but nothing that's like taking big chunks out of the body, which is really nice. So we're going to work on getting all those done. And then once that's good, we could start moving our, our focus to the engine. Uh, some of the, the chassis section and get all that stuff straightened out as well and hopefully make this thing movable under its own power really soon which is going to be super fun. To check out all the tools that you saw in this video you could click the link down below or you can visit eastwood.com to get all the tools you need to do the job right. Thanks guys.